That's exactly what we're going to do in our business spotlight. We contacted several contractors in the Portland area to see just exactly what's going on with residential geothermal systems. What we found was that there are a lot of new installations happening all over. So to show you exactly what a ground source geothermal system looks like, we go out to the field with Tom Hopkins. Well, thanks, Sherry. Uh, I'm usually not in front of the camera. I'm normally behind, but uh, today I'm going to step out here and uh, show you what's going on with geothermal. I'm here with Brian Erdahl from Jacobs Heating and Cooling. They're in the middle of installing a new system up in Sylvan Hill. Brian, thanks for joining us. Not a problem. My Tell pleasure. Us, uh, what's happening back here? Well, what we have here is a uh, drill rig that's uh, going to be putting in a 150-foot ground loop. What we got is an older home built in about 1940. Uh, he's actually doing upgrades. He's doing an uh, insulation upgrade. He's got a uh, furnace on the lower floor and a furnace on the upper floor. He has a total of 850-foot boreholes on this particular project. and. What we're going to do is basically link four loops up to the lower system and four loops up to the upper system. We'll split it up that way. How big is this hole that they're drilling here? This particular project is actually a three inch borehole. We're doing uh, two three quarter inch feet uh, down the hole for a total of 150 feet. Uh, we have 1,200 feet of bore total. We're, we're actually looking at about 2,400 feet of uh, pipe on this project. Basically what we need is enough thermal mass in the ground to basically uh, uh, handle the amount of load of the house. So what, we're, what we don't want to happen is end up having 100% run times on these systems and freezing the ground. How do you determine how deep? What we usually do is uh, we have our outfit here, Geodyne, we work with. They look at surrounding areas of old well log reports and kind of determine uh, what we're going to hit at what depth and kind of base everything on that. So here what we're actually drilling into is a clay type soil and uh, anything past 150 we're going to hit basically solid uh, basalt. I originally wanted 200. We determined 150 to save the homeowner uh, quite a bit of money. What's the temperature at 150 feet? In our area our mean earth temperature is between 53 to 55. It may be a little bit warmer when we get down to the 150 foot depth but not much. That's what makes these systems so efficient is you're, you're working with a stable temperature of the ground. So it, uh, unlike an air source where it's the, the air that's determining how, how much BT you're getting out of the system, these geothermal systems are working with a stable temperature, so they get all their BTUs all the time. It doesn't matter on if it's negative 20 outside or 120 outside. Yeah, it always struck me as funny on an air-to-air -air system that you're trying to extract heat out of cold air. Yeah, <laughs> and, and that's exactly the point. It's a pretty simple concept. It's been around since the 1940s, but uh, people are finally looking at it as a good sustainable way to heat their house and save a lot of money on their energy bills. We're here with uh, Al Jubitz. He's the homeowner installing the system. And the first question I have for you, Al, is why are you doing this? Uh, you know, I'm really excited about this technology. Its uh, efficiency rating is so much better than what I've got. Uh, furnaces are 96% efficient. This is 400% efficient. Um, I can get off fossil fuels in this house. The electric bill will go up, but, but the way I figure that is that electricity is renewable. Wind and solar. So I assume you're on the PGE uh, all wind program? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I understand that there's an added bonus to this besides just heating and cooling your house. Well, the hot water, that's, that's a bonus. You know, the, a lot of the gas bill goes to heat hot water, and I've looked at tankless hot water heaters, and I like those. Uh, but this uh, byproduct of this uh, heating or cooling system is hot water, so that's another benefit. It's pretty commonly known that these systems cost a little bit more than your air-to-air -air or your, your gas furnace. How long do you expect it'll take to recover your investment? I think it's about 14 years. 14 years. With the incentives and with the power saving. Uh, don't hold me to that, but it's, uh, it's close enough to make me want to do it. This stuff is for real. It really works. So, Brian, uh, we're looking at the pipe that's going to go in this hole. Unfortunately, uh, they hit some rock back there, so yeah. it's not going to go in today, and we're going to miss that. But tell us a little bit about this pipe. This isn't your average uh, PVC, is it? Well, not, not exactly. Uh, this particular pipe is a HDPE poly pipe. Uh, the HDPE stands for a high-density polyethylene pipe. 
It's designed uh, to withstand the expansion and contraction of the pipe uh, between the heating and cooling season. In the heating mode, we're constantly extracting heat from the ground, so our loop temperatures can't see 32 degrees. So at that point, we need a type of antifreeze to make it to where the water doesn't freeze. And so as we're extracting that heat out of the ground, we're running that through our refrigerant to water exchanger. So what happens is we extract all the heat out. As we're extracting, the water gets cooler as we're putting it back into the ground. And same with heating. We can get up to 90 degree water temperatures in, in the cooling mode, because at that point we're rejecting the heat uh, back into the ground. As you can see, we actually have a U-bend already on the end of the pipe. And this uh, particular length here is already measured out in a 200 foot length to go down in the borehole. So uh, they know that the pipe has actually hit the bottom of our bore after they're done drilling. We're not gonna see it going in the ground. We're gonna have to imagine that. Right now, we're gonna go to a new house that's under construction and take a look at the mechanical side. That sounds great. Thanks a lot for showing not us Not a problem, my pleasure. Well, we're here with Norm Matthias from Specialty Heating and Cooling. We've taken a slight detour on our way to the uh, new construction site to take a look at the, uh, well, tell me what it is. Well, it's a geothermal system with a horizontal uh, trenching. So we've got a loop field being installed for this gentleman's home that is, uh, has about 2,400 feet of coiled pipe in the ground. And the ditches, each ditch will carry one ton of cooling or heating for the home on his, on his heat pump system. We uh, dig it with a track hoe, and so all of the work will take place in his side yard here and then be recovered again and backfilled and then reseeded. So by next summer, it'll look pretty much like it did in the beginning. About how many feet are you going down, and why is that significant? Yeah, we just go down five feet. And five feet, one thing, that's as far as we can go legal without shoring for you know OSHA standards. We can't go below five feet. And it also, at that depth, the earth will maintain a temperature of about 50 degrees year round. Even though we take and remove some heat and put heat back in the ground with our loop field, the earth has enough time at that depth to regenerate with the mass of the earth and the, and the lengths of pipe we put in. Well, we just looked at a vertical bore. Uh, we've got a guy going down 150 feet with eight wells. And uh, that seems a little more complicated. Is this the preferred method if you've got the space? Well, it's less expensive to do this. Well drilling does cost more to do it. It's just as efficient to go down. They don't have to use as much pipe. Once you get that far into the earth, the regeneration process is a little more, you know, it's more quicker. So it, uh, we've done homes with the vertical boring many times. In, in a residential application, they may have a small side yard alongside the driveway where they can punch holes and put in a four-ton loop field in an area that's only 20 feet by 20 feet. So we started doing this in about 1990. And for several years, there were good tax credits incentives, and we installed dozens of these at that time. And then as the tax credits incentives kind of faded away, uh, so did the work in some respects. But now, however, with the new tax incentives, it has generated a lot more interest. But it's a 30% federal tax credit on the installation. So on the entire installation of this, of this uh, product, you're gonna have the loop field, electrical connections, everything that makes up the entire package does qualify for the 30% tax credit. Guy Lewis, you're the owner of this property and it looks like they made quite a job of your yard here. They've done quite a quite a job. They started yesterday morning and uh, ended up, uh, well, they're still working. They've got a ways to go, but there's gonna be a lot of dirt moved. Can I ask what your heating bill is now? The last time we ran heat on the whole house, it runs about $350 a month. Right now, we're, uh, we don't heat the upstairs part of the house and we do heat the downstairs with a pellet stove and the electric furnace heat beyond that. So I'm hoping for, uh, to be able to first of all, turn the heat back on. Right. <laughs> and uh, with the heat back on, I would hope that it comes in something like 150, maybe 200. All right, so you guys get a one on the end, one end, one on the other, do a little tug of war. <laughs> That's not going anywhere. No, it'll be stronger than the pipe itself right there. Here we are inside a new construction that's going on in the Portland area. I'm with Greg Bergeron, who's with Geonomic Development. Geonomic Development. We have an interesting system in this house, so you want to tell us a little bit about sure. what this does? Sure, sure. Let's start with over here. 
We have a radiant floor system. Uh, we heat the floor um, through individual zone controls so that the customer can keep uh, rooms uh, warm individually. We also have forced air in the home, uh, heating and cooling. The unit does all in one in one piece. Um, we also in the forced air have similar zones also so the customer can control his heating and cooling through the forced air end as well as the radiant floor. The context of the heating system is made uh, by geothermal heat. We actually extract heat from the ground, amplify it through the refrigeration process and heat the water in this tank here which heats the radiant floor. Uh, we have the compressor that starts most of the process. It essentially allows the system run at uh, one operating pressure and temperature and then a higher one according to the home's needs. In the back back there, there is two heat exchangers. The back one is the ground loop, uh, the one in front is the hot water loop, and then the gray one you see back there is the domestic hot water system. This is the refrigeration coil that uh, either heats or cools by forced air in the home. This is an electronically controlled motor. Uh, it actually is self-adjusting to the speed of the compressor. There's a microprocessor in the end of the shaft that m measures what it's building. So if the customer doesn't change his filter on time, which is common, it will just ramp up the speed in order to take care of the flow of air in the home. Okay, here we are in the great room, the largest room in the house. If we pan up, we can look through the ceiling rafters that aren't quite finished yet uh, to a white box that's up there near the roof. What's that about, Greg? That's a Honeywell air-to-air -air heat exchanger, and what that does is it takes stale air from the house, uh, exhausting it outside, bringing fresh air in across the heat exchanger, obviously, and uh, 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 saving 80% of the energy you normally would waste out your bath pans. Fantastic. Well, it looks like we've got a really super efficient heating system in this house, state of the art. Best you could get. All right, Greg. Thank you so much for showing us around. Appreciate you bet. it. Thank you. I'm Tom Hopkins, bringing you the tools to be sustainable today.